Hello everyone and welcome to another excellent game from the 2019 FIDE World Cup. Uh, it's the second game of the match between the two of them, so round 2.2. Uh, Eltash Safarli now with the white pieces against Nihal Sarin. Uh, as someone uh, corrected me in the previous video, said it's not pronounced Sarin, it's Sarin. So if that person was not trolling me, I will pronounce it uh, Sarin from now on. Uh, so, uh, Nihal having an excellent uh, uh, tournament so far, three straight wins in a row, and uh, I misspoke in the previous video we had uh, where Nihal had the white pieces, I said that he was a part of the training camp with Vladimir Kramnik, I don't know how I said it or why, uh, I, I was pretty sure I read it somewhere and that I saw a photo of him with Kramnik, uh, but the, the, then after uh, I kept uh, reading yesterday, uh, he was invited to this training camp, but uh, he was not there. Uh, that's what I read on Chessbase India's website. Uh, but okay, sorry about that. I did not uh, want to mislead you or anything. I just uh, really thought he was there. Uh, so that being said, uh, let's check this game out. A really exciting game. Uh, Already a lot of you suggested it, even though it's just finished, but uh, again, for, for very good reasons. And uh, it, it's hard to make uh, so many videos, uh, so how much you guys are suggesting, but, you know, keep at it. Uh, so e4, uh, by Safarli we have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to c4. The Italian game is on the board. Uh, we have bishop to c5, and as Safarli lost the previous game, uh, what do you play when you absolutely have to win? Of course, you go for the Evans Gambit. And yes, it was played in this game. Uh, so let's see. And, and I was very interested when I saw this. Everyone tweeted about it as soon as it happened, as you don't see uh, the Evans Gambit uh, very, very often in, in, in such a high-level chess. Uh, and even though I'm pretty sure, like, Nihal uh, really knows a lot of chess theory, but it's always exciting to see how much uh, so someone knows about the Evans Gambit. Uh, so he went in for the main line. Bishop captures on b4 with c3. Uh, white is ready to grab the center with d4, bishop to a5, and now d4. Uh, with d6, he's not interested in, in some pawn grabbing activities, as uh, he, if, if, you know, he, he needs a draw in this game to advance uh, in the FIDE World Cup into the third match. Uh, so we have d6, and now queen to b3, the standard idea, going after the f7 pawn, and now queen to d7. Queen to e7 is also possible, uh, but queen to d7 is the... Uh, mo mostly played move. Uh, we have castles by Safarli, now the, there's no pin here on the c3 pawn, and now bishop back to b6. Again, a standard idea uh, against the Evans Gambit, uh, you, you vacate the a5 square for the knight, so you can go after the uh, this double attack against the queen and the bishop. Uh, we have knight b to d2, and now knight to a5 as planned. Uh, and here you could go queen c2, queen b1, and Nihal chooses queen to b1, and now... Uh, uh, Nihal doesn't go for the bishop right away, uh, he, he leaves it uh, there and goes a knight to e7, he prepares castling and now d captures on e5, with knight to e7 Nihal ba basically gave up a pawn, uh, so he can uh, get his king to safety in time, so he castles and bishop to b5, this is a new move in the position, e captures on d6, uh, there is a game from 2017 where this was played, but bishop to b5, it's a new move by Safarli, and uh, well, it seems like he was, he, he came very well prepared. So let's see how Nihal deals with it. With c6 uh, attacking the bishop, bishop back to d3 now, so it seems that the light square bishop will survive this skirmish on the queen side, uh, and now rook to d8. Uh, and as you don't want your bishop on d3 here, uh, uh, Safarli offers a, a knight trade here to transfer the bishop back to this useful diagonal. We have knight captures on c4, bishop captures, and now knight to g6, uh, just uh, ready to capture this pawn on e5. Uh, rook to d1, preventing capture as the d6 pawn is now pinned, and queen to g4 now. Uh, and here we have rook captures on d6. Uh, now, of course, uh, Safarli is hoping for rook captures and pawn captures, where uh, white would have a very strong pass d pawn, uh, but Nihal not interested in giving him that, and you don't really have a good way of developing your light square bishop yet. This square is uh, covered by the rook and the bishop, this is covered by the pawn. Uh, so first, rook to f8. Uh, Nihal is uh, forced to retreat for the time being. Uh, queen back to b3 now, again putting pressure on the f7 pawn, uh, and now knight to f4. Uh, Nihal, Nihal forces a trade here as he's threatening uh, mate on g2, with bishop captures on f4 and queen captures on f4, and now uh, 
well, rook a to d1 seems like a logical move, and uh, there, there's nothing wrong with it, but uh, Safarli has a different idea. He plays rook to d3. He needs to free the d6 square, uh, because he wants to push e6, and he can't do that while the rook is on d6, because of queen captures on d6. So, bishop to g4, Nihal takes this opportunity to develop his light square bishop, also the rooks are now nicely connected, and now e6. This is what Safarli planned, with f captures on e6, bishop, sorry, that wrong bishop, bishop captures on e6 with check, uh, and now king back to h8. Uh, we have bishop captures on g4, and now Nihal doesn't recapture right away, the queen captures on e4 is stronger, as it grabs a pawn, while still... Uh, leaving the option of capturing the bishop because the rook on d3 is also under attack. Uh, so, rook to d7, uh, and now uh, meeting queen captures on g4 with knight to e5. But this has to be played, so queen captures on g4 and now knight to e5. And here already it's uh, somewhat unpleasant for black uh, facing this uh, knight to f7 check. And uh, you, you have to be careful. Capturing on f2 is, uh, well, mostly always a good idea, but not here. Uh, here, if you capture with bishop captures on f1, uh, uh, sorry, bishop captures on f2, uh, the king will just move away. Uh, king to h1, uh, and now your queen is still under attack, and, uh, well, the, the knight uh, is threatening to come uh, to f7. And also, uh, you, you have to be careful uh, of any smothered mates uh, in your, <laughs> coming your way. Uh, so here, if you move the queen, for example, queen to h4, you're still getting knight to f7 check, and now, uh, well, you have to capture it, and the white just wins the material. Otherwise, uh, if you don't capture it, you go into the well-known line of the nice smothered mate knight checks, a double check from the queen and the knight. King has to move, and now, of course, you sacrifice the queen, but uh, for a good reason, it's knight f7 checkmate. Uh, so, uh, here... You don't capture on f2, you just move the queen, queen to f4. It's important to keep an eye on the f7 square to avoid any uh, loss of material or, or a smothered mate. Uh, but still, knight to f7 check, we have king to g8, and here white could uh, grab a draw if he wanted to, but of course he doesn't. If he draws, he, he he's out of the competition. Uh, so, knight to d6 check first. We have king back to h8, and now uh, rook to f1. Now, again putting another defender to the f2 pawn, and again, you could capture here, there's nothing all that much wrong with it now, but still after king to h1, you haven't really uh, achieved all that much, and now you have your bishop is stuck there. Uh, so, instead, Nihal decides uh, to get rid of any uh, mate threats with h6, create some breeding room for the king here, uh, and now king to h1, not allowing this to come with check. And now, indeed, if you went for this pawn here with bishop captures, now knight to f7 check uh, is deadly. Uh, after king, uh, king goes here, knight g5, you open a discovery, king h8, knight e6 now uh, nicely forks the queen and the rook, and you will of course lose material here and the game. So after king h1, we have rook to f6, uh, a nice rook lift, preparing uh, the other rook to come over to f8, uh, and now comes knight to c4. And here, what do you play here? Here's an, a very interesting position because knight to c4 uh, is actually a losing move for Safarli. Uh, Nihal has a winning idea here, so feel free to pause the video and try to find this winning idea. And it's not a simple idea, so, you know, uh, be careful. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it in those few seconds, congratulations, you are an excellent finder of incredibly uh, difficult ideas. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, the move is rook to e8, because uh, now that you've seen it, of course, you realize that the white has a lot of back rank weaknesses, and the queen captures on f2 is such a deadly threat, you can't really defend against it, just to show an idea, if, if you go for, let's say, knight captures on b6 for some reason, uh, just queen captures on f2 wins the game on the spot, and now you don't really have uh, a good move, if you capture just a rook e1 check here and mate, uh, or if you don't capture it, you don't really have a better move. If you move the rook, queen f1, check, again, will mate. If you go here, then queen captures, king captures, and now rook to e1 is again mate. This rook covers the f2 square. So after rook to e8, obviously you can't play some silly moves, uh, and it's uh, hard to make a move. If you move the queen, you lose the knight here. Uh, so how can, how can you defend against uh, this uh, uh, capture? 
uh, well, uh, it's not easy. For example, you could try uh, something like rook to d2, uh, just uh, adding more defenders to the f2 uh, pawn, but now bishop captures on f2 comes. And now, again, white is without a move. You can't move the knight because your rook is hanging. You can't move the queen because the knight is hanging. Uh, if you try capturing here, then after all the trades, rook e1 is still mate. Uh, so not possible. You could try queen b1, uh, which leaves the knight, uh, you know, free for capture, uh, and hopefully you can give up the knight for the bishop here. And you can do this, but this is with the absolute best defense from white. For example, queen captures on c4. Now you play rook captures here, and after captures captures, uh, you will get queen captures on c3. And now, uh, of course, the threat is rook e1 check to pick up the queen. Uh, you will block it rook f1, but now after all is said and done, black is up two pawns uh, in, in a winning position. Two pawns is enough here to, to, to go for the win. Uh, you will block with b5, uh, you know, just push a5, a4, b4, st start pushing the pawns, and the white will always have to take care of uh, the, bank, the back rank. So, uh, rook to e8, an excellent winning move here, but it was not played in the game. Here, Nihal played the bishop captures on f2 first. He probably uh, said, okay, we'll just play rook e8 next. It's probably the same, but it's not. Here, he allows white this knight to d2. And now the knight after uh, the knight comes to f3, the f file is uh, blocked away for, from the queen uh, rook battery, and you will not be able to use any of uh, the trickery we've just shown. So here we have queen to g4. Queen to g4, Nikhal played this. Uh, he attacks the rook here, but the real idea is he wants to bring the rook to g6 and uh, threaten mate on g2. Uh, White said, all right, rook captures on b7. And here, uh, Nikhal has to play uh, queen to e2. With queen to e2, uh, he's still better. The game continues uh, and he enjoys his uh, position. Uh, but he played rook to g6 uh, a bit prematurely uh, as, okay, he's threatening mate now, but... Uh, now it's actually white who has a winning position. Uh, rook to g6 is a is a big blunder, uh, and uh, I don't know if you all if you see white's blunder immediately. You should, uh, but just in case you don't, I will give you a couple of seconds. Pause the video and try to find the winning idea for white in this position. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent spotter of hanging bishops. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, by playing rook g6, uh, Nikhal actually left the bishop on f2 hanging. And the problem is, Safarli just captured it, and now uh, while capturing it, the g2 pawn is also defended, so there is no mate. So here, uh, in a better position, uh, Nikhal just dropped a piece. So really, really a tough break for him, and, and in, he had an incredible run up until this point, and even here facing the Evans Gavit, but he was extremely low on time. At uh, at the moment that this uh, move was played, uh, this rook to g6 that we mentioned, he had like 55 seconds on the clock. So, I mean, uh, that, that's, uh, I mean, you face the Evans Gambit, you will spend a lot of time trying to calculate everything out. Uh, but okay, Nihal still continued the game, king h7, he doesn't want rook b8 to come with check, but now knight to f3, blocking, and now rook to e8, still hoping uh, for, for some, you know, Trickery, if possible, with queen to b1, pinning the rook here, uh, and now rook to e3. Uh, and here, okay, there is still some poison in the position. If white makes like a really silly move, something like queen b3, you can still win the game with queen captures on f3, for example. Now, if rook captures, rook e1 is mate. If you play g captures, then rook e1 check. Uh, rook f1, rook captures is mate, the rook covers the g2 square, but of course Safarli didn't, didn't play anything uh, like this. He played rook to b4, attacked Nihal's queen. Uh, we have queen to e6 now, getting out of the way, and here uh, Safarli just played rook to f1. Now there are everything is nicely protected, there are no more tricks here. Uh, white is up a whole piece, and it was in this position that Nihal Sarin uh, resigned the game, uh, as he's down a whole piece. Uh, so a really, really tough break, and uh, al although it's a, it's a tough break for him, I I'm still, I'm still glad that uh, someone, someone played the Evans Gambit and won a game with the Evans Gambit because history will remember that uh, between two grandmasters, uh, the Evans Gambit was played and uh, White won a game. Uh, so yeah, uh, tough loss for for young Nihal, but uh, a great victory for the Evans Gambit and for Elter Safarli also, of course. So yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Vivek Takar for her contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. Really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the FIDE World Cup, which you all seem to enjoy so much. Checking up on your lovely suggestions as usual and, and so on. So thank you all. I will see you soon. Have an excellent rest of your weekend.